we're back in San Francisco. I'm Rhonda Anderson at the American Diabetes Association's 74th Scientific Sessions, the largest diabetes meeting in the world. Today we're talking about the critical issue of childhood obesity and the increase in type 2 diabetes in children and youth. There's a growing interest in how children's bodies process the foods that they eat and how obesity and diabetes begin to develop at early ages. Two studies presented today help shed light on this topic. One study from the Yale School of Medicine compared how the brains of adolescents and adults differed in their response to consuming a glucose drink. It found that in adolescents, glucose increased blood flow in the parts of the brain involved in reward motivation and decision making, whereas in adults, it decreased the blood flow in these regions. Now, the science can't speculate about how eating or drinking glucose may influence behavior, but they have certainly shown that there are differences in how adults and adolescents respond to glucose. This is important because adolescents are the biggest consumers of foods with added sugars, such as soda. Ultimately, it will be important to investigate whether such exposure to sugar during adolescence affects food and drink consumption, possibly sparking cravings that can last a lifetime and how this relates to the development of obesity. The next phase of this research would look at actual sugared beverages instead of just glucose drinks. Another study by researchers at the University of Children's Hospital in Leipzig, Germany, compared fat cells in lean and obese children and adolescents. They found that when children become obese as early as age six, there is an increase in the number of adipose cells another name for abdominal fat. Not only that, but the cells are larger than the cells found in lean children. The researchers also found evidence of dysfunction in the fat cells of obese children, including signs of inflammation, which can lead to insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, and other problems such as high blood pressure. In the United States, about 5,000 youth are diagnosed with type 2 diabetes every year. The more we can understand the unique nation, nature of their brains and bodies, the closer we get to stopping diabetes. To view this press release in its entirely in, to view this press release in its entirety, visit the newsroom section of our website diabetes.org. And for continued updates and news from the 74th scientific session, be sure to stay tuned to diabetes.org/breakingnews. I'm Rhonda Anderson in San Francisco.